Oh my God, everybody, Dr. Fuck here with some news. Uh, David Lee Roth is opening for Scab Kiss. Yes, end of the road tour. They added Diamond Dave uh, to uh, the Scab Kiss end of the road tour. Um, look, I'm a huge fan of Dave. I mean, no better front man I've ever seen in my life. What I saw in the 80s, especially that 1981 tour, Nobody can touch him or Van Halen as far as a live act goes. The best. Hands down, stellar, the best damn band i ever seen in my life. To this day, I've never seen anybody come close, not even Van Halen, in the later years. The reunions, they were good, especially the first one, uh, 07. I never heard Dave sound that good. A lot of people say, Dave, you never had a good voice. Dave always sucked live. I beg to differ. I mean, I think YouTube has proof. Uh, check out the live clip of You're No Good, the live clip of uh, Dance the Night Away, the live clip of Bottoms Up, Unchained, hear about it later. Um, what's the other one? So This Is Love. You know, those pro shot clips, he sounds awesome. I love his organic voice because it was just attitude. And I'll take Little Dreamer over, you know, Why Can't This Be Love or you know, look, I'm not here uh, to bash Sammy. That's a lie. Look, and uh, more power to everybody out there that likes Sammy Hagar and Van Hagar and Sammy Solo. That's your deal, and I respect it. I have this philosophy. I hate bands, not fans. So anybody out there that likes these uh, th uh, Sammy Hagar, I got no problem with you. I have a major problem with Sammy Hagar because he's just a bullshit artist. He lies, man, uh, a lot. Um, that book he did, but I'm not going to go into Sammy Hagar. All I can say about Sammy Hagar, I'll take Dave's organic, natural voice over what I consider nails across a chalkboard. I never liked his voice. I just find it irritating. I love Montrose, the first one. I didn't like Paper Money, but okay, enough of him. So uh, Dave, though, now, you know, uh, I'm a Dave to the grave guy, man. To me, it's all about David Lee Roth when we talk about Van Halen. But I'm a Dave nerd fan, not a Dave Tard. I have to say this, man. David Lee Roth is nothing like he used to be. He's not Diamond Dave. He's Cubic Zirconium Dave now. He's creepy. I find him very creepy. Well, he's with that smile. And, you know, and I saw that um, commercial for that Vegas thing he's doing. And, those goofy dance moves, I'm like, Jesus, this is not my David Lee Roth. But, you know, I mean, that happens. A lot of people uh, later on in life, you know, they just don't have the same, possess the same. Not everybody can be Robin Zander, you know, who can still hold up, or Glenn Hughes, you know. A lot of people always say, well, it's because they're all like, you know, Paul Stanley defenders, you know, always. Uh, well, you know, Paul Stanley and Dave, they just can't. They can't sing anymore, and, and if Dave is smart, he'll ask Paul, hey, Paul, can I use your tape machine during my set so he can lip sync too? That's how I feel, you know. I have zero interest to see it. Now, when the end of the road tour came last time, I didn't go. I said I wasn't going to go. I didn't go. Now, if it comes back with Daily Roth, I'm still not going to go, but I will if I get a free ticket, just for Dave. But it's still not going to be the fair warning Dave, you know. Um, it's just not the same anymore, and I know this. I've seen David Lee Roth many times after, I say his peak was probably little ain't enough. After that, the, the high screams were gone, and he does that, woo, that, I don't know, man. He's just straining and shit, and uh, it's just not Dave to me anymore. And, you know, I know a lot of people are going nuts. I really don't have much of an interest to see it. Unless it's for free, then I'll go. But that's what I think. Uh, Scab Kiss is taking out David Lee Roth. Uh, uh, Cubic Zirconium Dave on uh, the End of the Road Tour. But, um, you know, I guess, you know, all you that are excited about it, hey, I'm happy for you. You uh, get to see uh, Dave open for Kiss instead of a, some guy up there painting. But is Dave performing? Because, you know, maybe Dave is taking the... The place of that painter. 
Gee, I hope not. Um, so that's uh, with that. Um, I have zero interest, but hey, uh, I'm happy for you people that are happy that uh, Dave's opening. But you're not seeing, you're not seeing classic Dave. You're not seeing classic Kiss either. I don't care what you say. Uh, that shit is is <sighs> air piano, really. Um, anyway, so um, what else? Um, the stadium tour. Uh, Motley Crue, Poison, and Def Leppard and Joan Jett. Um, uh, so, I don't know if you all saw that video I made when Motley Crue uh, came back from... I wasn't too kind. And then I read online they were charging $3 million per show. And when I read that, I said, oh, there's no way this tour is going to do good. With, you know, a stadiums with that type of ticket prices to pay the cost of you know, Def Leppard's probably asking for a million, and you know, poison, you know, hairspray, whatever. It's, it's, you know, it's a lot of hairspray. And I figure, you know, they're not going to do well. But then, when tickets went on sale, I noticed the front section was less than three hundred dollars, all the way to forty dollars. I, I, the second I saw that, I said, oh, this tour is going to do fantastic. It's going to pack stadiums everywhere. I said that. The day tickets went on sale, uh, the pre-sales, pre because I was curious. I found out the pre-sale uh, co uh, code was Motley Crue is back. So I, I said, I went on Ticketmaster. And, you know, people out there just love to, like, be, you know, a lot of people accuse me of being negative. I'm just being honest. But I see people putting up, like, uh, uh, screenshots of, from, like, ticket hubs and these, you know, ticket brokers that are char charging thousands of dollars. And people are like, oh, fuck that. I'm not paying that much. Go to Ticketmaster. Stop being so gullible. Uh, believe in anything you see online. It's selling out. I've seen uh, some dates are sold out. And I'm not surprised. I'm still not going, but I got to say, I'm not surprised. And more power to all you that are going. I hope you have a great time. You know, I, you know like what I said about Daily Roth and Kiss, I saw Motley back in the 80s, man. It's not the same band. It's not the same quality. You're seeing a downgrade from, from that Motley Crue. Um, and, you know, I, I have zero interest. I'm, I'm not going to. Even for free, I wouldn't go to that. And uh, it's happening here in Miami at the Marlin Stadium. And I'm not going to go out there and just pay for $30 parking. And that's another thing. Uh, when I saw the tickets were so that low, I thought, they can't be charging $3 million. Uh, per ticket, but there's somebody on the podcast page, Justin Childers, shout out to Justin. He said, uh, he did the math. He said if they get $75 off each person at stadium, the promoter will break even. If he gets more, then he'll make money. Well, that's exactly how he's going to make money. $30 parking, $18 beers. And you know, they, everybody there ain't going to just be buying one beer. I mean, a lot of people got to drink a lot of beer. A lot of you females got to drink a lot of beer. So that way you can pretend it's Motley Crue in the 80s. you got to be blind drunk. And um, so, uh, hey, there you go. Uh, so more power to the stadium tour. It's going to do great. Still not going, but uh, everybody that is going, enjoy yourselves. I saw Motley Crue back in the 80s. I saw Def Leppard on the High and Dry tour, open for Ozzy, Pyromania, and then Hysteria was done. I did see him one more time with Sticks, and it wasn't that bad. You know, but it's still not wor worth the interest to me go out there on a hot summer day in Miami and sweat it out to downgrades of what I saw in the 80s. That's just my opinion, but everybody out there that wants to go, more power to you. And uh, what else? What else? Uh, the new Ozzy song. I am the biggest Ozzy. Look, Black Sabbath is my favorite band of all time. And uh, they're going to premiere the new Ozzy video for tomorrow for the song Underneath the Graveyard or Under the Graveyard, whatever it's called. Jeez, it's terrible. It's so bad. And then I heard that other one, that other song that was kind of like a War Pigs ripoff. That was probably worse. No, nah, probably equally sucked. They equally sucked. But um, I really... You know, I know I'm being a negative Nancy here, but I'm just speaking my mind. The new Ozzy's terrible. I mean, it makes Black Rain sound like Black Sabbath. Just not good. 
Uh, and uh, something else that happened was uh, the Rock and Roll Ribs 10th anniversary, uh, Nico McBrain's restaurant that's here in uh, Florida, about an hour drive from me, and I went. And uh, when I heard Pat Travers was going to be there, I said, shit, I got to go to this because I haven't seen Pat Travers since he opened for Kiss on the Lick It Up tour. That's how long it's been. And I saw him one time, no, two times before that. I saw Pat Travers at the Miami, uh, was it the Orange Bowl? Opening for Foreigner, which it was supposed to be Ozzy, but Randy Rhodes died a day or two prior to that. So Pat Travers took his place. And the first time I saw Pat Travers was opening for Ted Nugent, and he had Tommy Aldridge on, on uh, drums and the great Pat Thrall, and Mars on bass, rest in peace. And... Uh, the opening band that night was the Scorpions, 1980. Nobody knew who the Scorpions were. But anyway, Pat Travers came down to do a, a tribute to the bass player, Mars, who, who, uh, who passed away. And uh, it was one of the rare times that Nico and Pat played together. For those that don't know, Nico played on the first, I believe, the first two Pat Travers albums. And uh, it was phenomenal. It was a phenomenal set. Uh, toward the end, Nico went up there, and it was a reunion, and it was just awesome. Ripper Owens was there, and he did uh, some Maiden songs, Fly to Icarus, Rat Child, something else. And uh, some Priest songs, Got Another Thing Coming, Breaking the Law, um, Living After Midnight. That was awesome. Got to meet the Ripper, which is great. And I will be seeing Ripper soon on the Three Tremors tour, which uh, the singer Jack Panzer, I dig Jack Panzer, and um, uh, Sean Peck who's in a band called Cage that I absolutely love that band, Cage. He was also in that uh, Denner Sherman uh, project. And uh, that's going to be great. I love Ripper. I think he's an awesome singer. And it's going to be fun seeing that. I told him, I'll be there, dude. Uh, it actually fell on the same day as Guns N' Roses. I was going to go to Guns N' Roses very close to me uh, on the same day. But then I found out that was happening, which is West Palm Beach, about two hours from me. I'd rather go to that. Because um, who knows when that'll come back. Guns N' Roses will be back. Uh, anyway, and uh, so what else? Uh, so yeah, Rock and Roll Revs. Meet the great Pat Travers, which was awesome. He couldn't have been nicer. And I initially went to that show also thinking, I'm going to make a video out of this. I'm going to take my camera and my Zoom recorder and interview people and make a funny, you know, day-long video of it. Even though I did have a great time, unfortunately, what happened was uh, I gave my camera to my friend to film the shows. So um, he was up there the whole time filming. And at some points, you know, some, some bands that played, uh, which I won't name, uh, were not my thing. And uh, so I was hanging around and having such a great time and thinking, damn, man, I wish uh, I could find my friend with a camera because I did go look for him. I couldn't find him, so... And I even called him, and he didn't pick up. So I never got the cool footage of hanging out with friends. And Bobby Gustafson from X Overkill was there, and Dave the Beast Spitz, who was in Black Sabbath. And I got a member that was in Black Sabbath on my phone. I have his phone number, and that's mind-blowing to me. And uh, it was just a great day, great event. Nico was awesome. He's always awesome. Uh, I didn't get a picture with Nico because I have before, and... You know, he was pretty much mobbed, and I, I didn't want to bother him. But I had to meet Pat Travers, and, and I bumped into Ripper. Couldn't have been more nicer, you know. So, uh, yeah, the 10th anniversary of Rock and Roll Ribs was awesome. And anybody that hasn't been there and you plan on doing it, uh, man, I, I'm not saying this, you know, just to say this. I've never had better ribs in my life. It's insanely good. And it's such a great place, for, especially for you Maiden fans. You know, they have, like, the mummy from the Power Slave tour there, one of the mummies, and uh, all gold and platinum albums everywhere. And it's just a great, great setup, great environment, great food. So I highly recommend you go to Rock and Roll Ribs, even though I didn't have ribs this last time because there were so many people there, and you had to wait, like, an hour and a half to have ribs. So, you know, I skipped the ribs this time. First time I was there. It was the first time I was there I didn't have ribs, and it was the first time I was there where Nico was actually there. Because every time I go to Rock and Roll Ribs, he's never there. Uh, and it was the first time I went to an anniversary, because there's been ten of them. But, you know, I was never really enticed till um, I found out Pat Travers was going to be there. I said, fuck, I got to go. 
Anyway, so uh, that's about it uh, about the news uh, this time around. Uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel and click the little bell, the notifications. And um, if you want, you know, I get a lot of requests. Do this, do that, do this, do that. Hey, I'm willing to do it for a price. You know, I'm not a jukebox, but if you want me to be a jukebox, you know how jukebox works. You got to put some money in it. So I got my PayPal under there. If you want me to do a track by track or whatever, throw a little green over here. Not begging, just asking, you know, uh, if you want to. Because look, I don't monetize my page. I have over 15,000 subscribers. I can do that. But then I'd have to make you all sit through commercials and shit. So, you know, it shows you I'm not that money hungry, but at the same time, I'm not a jukebox. And I am willing to take some money because vinyls ain't cheap. And uh, I'll do, uh, you know, whatever's right, whatever you ask if the price is right. Anyway, thanks for watching. Schmack a gob. This video has been brought to you by Miami Metal Merchant. For your metal needs at competitive prices, visit MiamiMetalMerchant.com. Tell them Dr. Fuck sent you.